And you can see here this apricot tree, and actually this one down here, have flowered and actually were in full bloom a couple days ago. And now you could say that they're in the shuck, which means the fruits have formed after being pollinated and they're now in the shuck, which is the bottom part of the flower. And they're kind of free after the petal drop has happened, waiting to break free from the shuck, the bottom part of that flower, to then get exposed and to get in that final stage of those small green fruits. And it is around April, I think today's April 2nd or the 3rd, it's the 3rd. And essentially what that means is we're getting closer to my average last frost date. Now, as the tree progressively starts to flower and expand its flowers, maybe it's in full bloom, maybe it's in the shuck like that, or maybe it's like some of these other trees, these pluots or these plums back here, which are just now showing petals. They're getting to a certain stage. Each of these stages of flower development has a particular name. And each particular stage of flower development can withstand certain temperatures or even frost. As you can see here, this pluot tree is just now showing its petals. And there's a certain name for this. And there's also a corresponding temperature, as I mentioned. So we're not in the clear just yet in terms of um, potential frost because our average last frost is May 1st. So we have another month potentially of frost, maybe even more than that, of potentially seeing frost, which is pretty unlikely. But this is a good sign, at least historically in my yard, that these trees have just now flowered at this stage. Um, it really is difficult, I find, in this living in this climate, you get these, these trees here, you think, oh, I'm gonna plant myself an apricot, I'm gonna plant myself a plum, an apple tree, a pear, and then all of a sudden, you get a late frost and you lose all your flowers, you lose all your fruit. This happens many years, so, uh, you know, you got to get lucky a little bit. Maybe let's say every one out of five years or every two out of five years, you might lose something like your apricots, which do indeed flower very early in the season. But I would argue this year, we actually are doing pretty well in terms of timing. So there's a good chance, I think, um, just in terms of when these guys are actually going to form their fruits. If we don't see at this point, something around 25 and a frost, we should be good. I should have myself these apricots here that you see. One cool thing that I did uh, last year was I grafted a variety of apricot called Early Blush, and it was really one of my favorites. So I said, I wanna make a copy of this. So I came in here last season and I grafted it right down here. You could see that graft union. There's actually a, a uh, shoot coming out from below the graft, so it's a good idea to break this off. But it came at really an opportune moment because the early blush variety I had actually over there died on me. So I grafted a backup and actually it took, and it's doing well, it's even flowering at such a young age. But what's even nicer is that this older tree here, Tomcot, different variety, is now getting pollinated, cross-pollinated by this new early blush apricot. So I got lucky. Didn't expect this to happen, didn't expect to need that tree, but I now have cross-pollination to actually get better fruit set on this particular tree. So that's really nice, very lucky, but uh, just goes to show even further that not only are you not guaranteed um, you know, apricots every year, but you may just lose your tree. So these different stone fruits can be very difficult to, uh, to actually keep them alive, happy, and healthy 